Introducing the Shoe Zan. 2,000 Nike shoes in a 9,000 square foot warehouse filled with memorabilia that'll make all sneakerheads nostalgic. We tagged along with Shoezium creator Jordan Michael Geller, who turned his love for sneaks into a multi-million dollar success story on eBay to get a tour of the last 26 years in basketball great Michael Jordan's shoe history. So here we are in this shrine to Michael Jordan, surrounded by posters. There's over 100 posters documenting his entire career. And then back there in the corner, those are 11 pairs of Jordans from 1985. And it's just gonna work its way 360 degrees all the way around to the latest model. So 1985, Nike gave Jordan his own contract. They paid him a million bucks, which is actually what lured him away from Adidas. He was debating whether or not he was gonna wear Adidas or Nikes. Nike said, hey, we'll give you your own shoe and we'll give you a million bucks, and Michael signed up. Like, why not? <laughs> the sneaker game was changed forever. I mean, we're talking 26-year-old shoes that are brand spanking new. I mean, where else are you gonna get a shoe like this but on eBay? So you've never worn them? Never. You never tempted to wear them? Never, I'm not even tempted to touch them. I'm like scared You're of like, them, to be honest. I'm like, oh. So Michael called this the devil's shoe. He was like, oh, I can't wear that. That's like what the devil would wear. And this shoe, the black red, which is known as the bread in the sneaker community, mm -hmm. but the black red was actually banned by the NBA. David Stern, who was the commissioner and still is the commissioner of the He's NBA. still the commissioner after all these decades. Exactly. <laughs> he banned the shoe because it was too bright and colorful and at the time you needed to wear like white shoes or predominantly white shoes. Nike paid a $5,000 per game fine, fine for Michael to wear this shoe and it just completely changed the game. In 94 they started retroing them and then around the turn of the millennium and it's basically a bunch of different retros sort of set off with toys and props to bring them to life, but also color coordinated so that they're pleasing to the eye. Here's like a tribute to the North Carolina, the, the North Carolina shot. You got your mascot here, a picture of it in color, a picture of it in black and white, and Patrick Ewing just frozen there like what happened. So the twos, check this out. So this shoe was like known as the luxury shoe. Since the Jordan one was so popular, they kind of like stepped up their game. They made them with this like faux lizard the shoe was designed in Italy, which was like, you know, nice men's shoes, dress shoes are normally Italian. So, and they also uh, had this Wings logo and removed the swoosh. The Nike swoosh never hit another Jordan again. And then the three came along and they came up with the Jumpman. So the Jordan 3 is known for the elephant print around the toe. It's the first time that Nike tried to use like an animal type skin. I mean, it's not real, it's faux, but you know, so that's why all these all elephants the are around here. And why are there Oreo cookies? These are known as the Oreos. I mean, the shoe comes out, It's and it's not even black and white, which is funny, but like people dub this shoe the Oreo. These are known as the Thunder Lightnings. So remember these lightning things from back in oh the day? Oh my gosh, yes. So that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Three bucks at the swap meet. I need to go check out some swap meets. That's even, what I'm saying. You had some amazing finds at swap meets. This is the most beautiful shrine ever built from a swap meet. That's <laughs> for sure. The Jordan 4 was 89 and the 5 was 90. This is the oldest shoe in my collection. I've had it for 12 years. I bought it at the tail end of college and like kept it dead stock for the longest wow. time. All these different fives. When I was a kid, people were actually being murdered for this shoe. And this was the Sports Illustrated, your sneakers are your life. You can see it actually matches the exact color. Oh, wow. um, I found these at the swap meet as well. And at the swap meet, I found the original first issue Sports Illustrated oh, wow. that I bought for two bucks. So all these fives, the Jordan 6s, 91. Again, we talked earlier about how I remember when they beat the Lakers. Mm -hmm. It was also the first time that Michael had the Be Like Mike Gatorade ad. So that's the significance of the Gatorade prop mm -hmm. over here. It's not like arbitrarily placed. Sevens, eights, nines, tens, and it wraps up over here with the 11s. People. A lot of people love the 11s, but they're not easy to find. I mean, including myself. And actually this shoe right here is so special to me. This shoe came out in 96. I was a freshman in college and my parents wouldn't buy me Jordans when I was a kid. They were just too expensive and my parents wanted to buy me. I mean, I always had Nikes, but not Jordans. And so I went to college and my parents gave me like a very limited budget for like food and haircuts and stuff like that. Boom, Jordans, very first thing I did. So I <laughs> bought these. food when you can have Jordans? Right, so I bought these and like worried about how I was gonna take care of myself later. How awesome is this for anyone who loved Bugs Bunny and Jordan in a movie together? I mean, actually check out this display where Michael's sort of teasing Bugs right behind you, Samia. 
kind of oh holding God. the ball up above where bugs can reach it. It's like, you're not as tall as me. And so the 12s over here, the 13s, 14s, here's that last shot shoe with the last shot poster in the background. The last shot he's talking about is, of course, game six NBA Finals, Utah Jazz against Brian Russell. And just like, the pose. So 14s, 15s, 16s, the 17, this is a cool shoe. He retired and Michael was really into jazz and these are inspired by jazz. There's jazz notes on there and jazz is very like impromptu and that's a lot of like what Michael's game was like. And then also since he was retired, there's a golf course on the sole. Like, that's what he's doing with his free time now, exactly. golfing. <laughs> So the 17s, 17s, 18s, you know, back in the day it was all about like the red Jordans, the black and red ones, because he was a bull. But in this era, he was a wizard. So the blue ones are actually like the ones that are more desirable, including these ones right here that are known as the lightning. And I mean, you can see how it would have matched a Washington wizard uniform mm -hmm. just perfectly. So 17s, 18s, 19s, 20s, 21s, 22s. The 22 over here, this shoe's inspired by and made out of basketball. It came oh, out wow. along with Michael's birthday. So we went 22, 23. This is the 2009, 10, and then the most recent 2011 model where I actually got to go and meet Michael Jordan. I got this pillow from the release party. I sort of like begged them to what let me like have it. What was it like to meet Michael Jordan after all these years of all these, after all this collecting, it's like. I was just hoping that it wouldn't be like an awkward handshake, you know, like one, one in a million handshakes just doesn't happen. I was like, okay, this is my chance. And I went up to him, cool as ice. Hey, Michael, nice to meet you. Thank you for having me at the party. He said, thank you very much. You I hope you had a good Jordan? time. I said, I'm Jordan, but I didn't tell him Jordan Michael. <laughs> I didn't tell him about the shrine. I just didn't want to like one day be that know. guy. One day he'll know. What happens in 2012 when Jordan comes out with new shoes? Where do they go? It's been a problem, you know? Like, <laughs> like there's this whole space of spills. It, it's amazing I how mean, the shoes have just organically filled out the place. Yeah. And there's always room for more, you know? I mean, I could shove this over, put that here, and make room. And Got it. That, for that's basically. 2012 will be somewhere in here. I don't know. I mean, 2012 is going to have to work its way upstairs, oh maybe. Oh, my gosh.